morning, everybody, and welcome to Heronbrook Farm. It is fantastic to have you here. As always, going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to set up a watering system for the sheep out in the field. Um, the reason we need to do that is although there's a stream there, as you'll see when we get there later, we've actually fenced the stream off because we don't want the sheep getting into the stream, making the water mucky, possibly drowning, all of that sort of thing. So what we do is we pump the water out of the stream using a solar-powered pump. We pump it into this IBC, which is a big container, the reservoir, if you like, and this contains one metric tonne of water, or a 1,000 litres. Um, and then what happens is it's gravity-fed into the trough that you can see below, and the trough has got a ball valve in, as you'll see later, and that keeps it permanently topped up. So we use a car battery to power it. That car battery is powered by the sun from a big solar panel, and then there's all sorts of complicated float switches and all of that sort of thing that makes the whole system work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit of work in the barn to get it ready, um, and then once we've done that, we'll take the whole lot out to the field and get it installed, and you'll be able to see it working. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, do subscribe if you enjoy this sort of thing. Uh, we make lots of videos uh, from the farm and also from the kitchen. Be lovely to have you along on the journey. So let's jump in and get this built. Okay, so let's look at the components that we're gonna to need to build this. And it starts with this IBC container. Uh, we use black ones. And the reason that we use black ones is because then the sun doesn't come in uh, and make a lot of algae form in, in the water. So black ones are better. They're brilliant IBCs. You can lift them up with a forklift, you can carry them round, and they contain uh, a, a thousand liters of water. They also come with their own built-in valve. So if we don't need it, we, we can shut it off. If you come a bit nearer, the other components we're gonna need. Uh, underneath here, we've got the trough, uh, which if you just look under here, it's got a ball valve, and that controls the, um, the water going in and out of the trough by gravity. Uh, we've got the car battery, which is actually one of those deep discharge camping batteries. We've got the water pump, that's what's gonna go in the stream. Uh, we've got the hose that connects it. We've got the float switch that we're gonna install in the IBC, and that will turn the pump on and off. Uh, and then we've got the box that the, uh, the whole battery and all the control units in. And then finally, we've got the solar panel. It's a 60 watt solar panel, and that'll sit on top of the IBC, and that's what will keep everything charge. Most of this kit actually just comes in a pair of boxes. It's an awesome bit of kit from a company called Hotline. Uh, we get the solar panel, the battery box, the pump, the tubing, uh, pretty much everything in, in one kit. We then buy the trough separately, the IBC separately, and the battery. And what we do is bolt it all together. So if you follow along, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the water inlet and the float switch into the IBC. Okay, so we're gonna install this float switch inside, and what we've got to judge is, uh, it turns off when this rises, is how high we want the level of the water to go. So we're probably gonna put the inlet over here, so you actually want the float switch to be surprisingly low, um, because it won't turn off until that reaches the high point. Something like that. So we're gonna drill a hole just there. Okay, and these IBCs have very thin skin, so what you actually use for drilling is just a wood auger um, and run it on a slow speed on the drill and just very gently. There we go, job done. Okay, and then we need to make the hole for the water inlet, which we set a bit higher. Right, so now we'll get those installed and it is a bit of a contortion, because although it will go in here quite nicely, what will happen, um, and we do like to get these nice and tight, so you're almost screwing it into there. So it's a bit of a contortion, because what I've got to do is I've got to reach in now through this tiny little hole and try and get the screw cap on the other side, which is always a bit of a pain. But where there's a will, there's a way. And the important thing is not to drop it. You just grab the hold of the other side of that pee. So we're gonna feed those wires through, but before we do that, we've gotta put this little rubber washer over so that that seats up against the end here, because this float switch will actually be underwater once the IBC is full, and uh, we don't want it to leak. So we'll just feed that on. So that just seats on there like that, and now we can feed the wires through.
Okay. 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 Going. Right, just hold a second. It's the right way around. Awesome. Keep pulling. Brilliant. Okay. Right, and we just need to get the catch on the other side of that now. Yeah, we just need to make a hole in the top um, because this lid does not have a vent in it. And if we uh, if we didn't make a hole in the top, we'd create a vacuum and nothing would uh, nothing would run out. So I'm just going to make a hole in the top. Oh boo! Uh, I'm just going to make a hole in the top, and now I've dropped my drill inside, uh, which is a little bit annoying. Now we've got to figure out a way of getting the drill out. I do have a plan. Okay, we've tipped it up. Hopefully, I can now reach that drill. There it is. Got it. So the moral of the tale is make sure that you tighten your drill bit up before you drill a hole in the top of an IBC, otherwise you end up looking a bit of a fool. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make the build the mounting frame for the solar panel. Okay, that's done. Doesn't have to be that rigid because we're actually going to zip tight to the top of here anyway. And the final thing to sort out before we go to the field is the trough. So what we need is a line that's going to go from the IBC tap, which is here. Let's take that cover off. We're going to go from the IBC tap uh, and into this bit of hose which will end up in this quick connector and we'll then connect this end to the trough and then what we can do is we can detach it using this quick connector if we ever need to move the trough or the IBC separately. So that's what we're going to do next. So the biggest nightmare with doing any of this kind of work is working out which connectors you need to fit to where. Um, and uh, everything is slightly different. We tend to use one inch hose or 25 mil hose. The best place in the country, in the UK, to go for any advice on that is Smiths of the Dean. All of the connectors that you see us using here today come from Smiths of the Dean. Give Neil Smith a ring. Uh, he's an absolute expert on how things connect to other things to do with water systems for agriculture and a lot of other industries as well. Um, absolutely brilliant. Link to them in the description. If you're doing anything like this, I would sincerely urge you to give Neil a call. Right, that's it. We need to get all of this loaded on a trailer uh, and get it out to the field and we'll get it installed in the field and we're good to go. So we'll see you over at the field. Okay, so we're here in the field. Now we're going to get it all connected. We've got the water trough in place down there, pretty level. We've got this in place, the IBC, pretty level. We just need to connect the pump. The pump's going to go along the side here and into the stream just where that bridge is and we'll run the pipe up here and into the connectors at the back and then we'll get the solar panel on and we should be away. So we found a really good place for the pump to go and we've put a stake in there as you can see and tied it into this fallen tree which we'll do for now um, and what I'm going to do I'm going to stick the pump in but I need to get the hose in first so there's the pump just get the hose on the end of there like that and then get a hose clip on and clamp that on tight Okay, so that's going to come round there and clip on here, but I'm just going to get a hose clip. Right, so we just lift the solar panel into place. Other way round, Peter. Perfect. Okay, and now we'll get everything up there connected, zip tied on, and then we'll show you it all working. So this is from the solar panel. Actually, this clips on at the back here. I don't know if you go around the other side, Pete, you'll be able to see. So these just clip on like that. 
and the float switch connects here. And then finally, the pump. Getting close to the moment of truth. And I hope it works, because otherwise, we'll have to dismantle the whole thing and start again. Right, let's turn it on. It's working. It'll take a while for the water to get all the way up. There we go. Hallelujah. So it will take about two or three hours actually for this IPC to fill. So what we're gonna do is pack up clip off all the ends of all these zip ties uh, and we'll come back in two or three hours make sure that it's actually working in terms of filling the trough and we'll close the video then. So we've just opened the tap at the bottom and as you can see the water's starting to flow. It doesn't flow particularly quickly but it will soon fill this trough and it stops nicely so we're good to go. So that's all done, another big job completed. Uh, Peter and I will come back later and just make sure that the switch is working to turn it off and that the trough is full, uh, but we won't bother filming that. So it's been fabulous having you along today. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>